The delays on the release of the final part of the state capture report are raising doubt and serious questions about its credibility for the EFF. The final instalment of the state capture report brings to a conclusion four and a half years since the Commission's establishment and three and a half years of oral testimony. The EFF's Treasurer General, Umpile Maotwe, joins us now. Good evening and welcome. Thank you very much for being with us. This latest volume is uh, over 1,800 pages long, effectively. It's a tome, effectively. Um, perhaps as an opener, we can talk about the EFF's position on the scope and depth of what has been found uh, in this report collectively. No, thank you very much, uh, Iman. Good evening to you and the viewers at home. So we've seen a state capture commission that went beyond its timelines. I mean, you remember how many extensions the, the, the uh, deputy chief justice asked for. And then what comes as uh, shocking to us is that out of this report uh, of the commission that lasted four years, he's now also recommending another um, commission on PRASA. So we spent billions of rents over a billion rand of taxpayers' money on the commission that today is telling us that you actually need another commission. So we, and we've been saying that these commissions are a waste of time. If there is evidence of wrongdoing, take the people, the hawks and the NP must do their job, investigate and take people to court and let people get imprisoned. Now we spend over a billion rands, only to be told the recommendations are saying that there must be another inquiry. But also what comes out very shocking is the delays, as, 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 as we mentioned. We are more worried about the delays that it took because um, there's, you know, in this country there's a history of peddling and doctoring of reports. So, well, hold your, hold that thought because I want to deal with it very specifically as a separate question. Let's just maybe go back to the first part about whether this was worth it in the first place. We heard Justice Zondo say, you know, acknowledge the price tag and say what it has done is inoculated us against future state capture. We understand the anatomy of how state takeover takes place. So we've got that one. We've managed to, through the culpability of various agents, you know, organizations and institutions in the private sector during the course of it, manage to recoup some money for the fiscus by way of fines. Um, that there has been a benefit. Do you think it doesn't go far enough? Actually, I don't agree with the, the uh, Chief Justice Zondo when he says that um, now we've come to understood how state capture was captured. Currently, as you speak, this sixth uh, administration uh, in South Africa, we're talking of a president. So the state is made, it's made up of three arms, right? It's the judiciary, the executive, and uh, the legislature. Now, the judiciary, the judiciary um, I mean, there's a judge who single-handedly, without any provocation, decided to steal the documents. The documents that are alleged to have the judges contained in, in, that, in that report of CR70. Now, that for us, is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's problematic because if the president is true that the president gave money to judges, that is part of the state capture. But remember also that the legislature is made up of members of parliament who come from political parties. In, in South Africa, in parliament of South Africa, currently, the ANC is the majority. So it is by no brainer that Parliament is, is, is the majority is ANC and therefore they will push the ANC mandate. The executive is the ANC. If the judiciary is captured, then that is that that's the state capture we should bring about. Here we are talking about an attempt to, um, to 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 capture the state. And what I'm saying that is in this whole state capture report, it doesn't talk tell us about how the judiciary was attempted to be corrupted or how the judiciary was attempted to be captured. We are talking about institutions, SSA, Transnet, you know, SOEs like PASA and all those things. But there is no evidence that says that the president captured the legislature, captured the judiciary and captured the executive. So for me, that, that is where the problem is. Would it, would it not be more accurate to say then, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, that it didn't go far enough? Because looking at the dysfunction of the state and the anatomy of people who had influence on very key players in the state in terms of where monies would go, what would be done, and, and who would benefit out of it, that there was, there was something that South Africa can say accounts for these high levels of corruption and understanding how this orchestration happens in terms of taking over people of influence. This, is just, this report is just revealing us what we've always been saying, that the ANC is corrupt to the core. Right. I mean, from volume one, from the report number one up to this last one, it's just ANC. It's ANC's government. Who's government of the day? The ruling party is the ANC. Who is the president of the, from, from which party is the ANC? So it just has enlightened the South Africans that ANC is corrupt to the core. And that's what we should take out of this 
commission report. I, I want to go to the concerns that we started talking about in the beginning. Paint a picture for the nation on how you think this report could have been altered or was likely altered. This is the one of the concerns you have, right? So you, you have the Chief Justice who denied a very key player who's been um, mentioned by a lot of witnesses, uh, Arthur Fraser, who came out now to level some allegations against the sitting president. And now he has been denied to come and testify. He has been denied to cross-examine the witnesses that came. And it was said that now, only now, he's found guilty and he must be charged. H how does that correspond? If really uh, Arthur Fraser had such a huge influence and he was uh, uh, mentioned many times like Jacob Zuma, he should have frequented the, the State of uh, Capture Commission. He should have went to the commission to tell us his side of the story. Right now we don't know his side of the story. We're just hearing witnesses that are talking, and Miss Kay and Y and whoever, that are talking about Arthur Fraser. But Arthur Fraser was denied an opportunity to go and himself answer to those allegations. Today he's found guilty and it must be charged for that. We're not fools, the South Africans. Really, Justice Zondo must not take us for fools, really. Mpile, what do you think about, you know, we're in a context where, and that's why we've been so careful in the way we, we manage information, or even, you know, stories that break, for example, to try and understand the veracity of claims that are being made, the veracity of allegations and the credibility of things, that we have to separate the issues. The state capture, as you say, you know, it's, it's a glaring question, um, this, you know, disallowing of Arthur Fraser to, to question some that had made some serious allegations and statements about him and the subsequent um, findings in the report now vis-a-vis -vis Arthur Fraser. Um, but the allegations that are made against the president uh, or the case that's been laid against the president by Arthur Fraser now should also be seen in its own, that what we have to do is to be able to separate them and not conflate them so we can see them and see exactly you know, what is credible, what is not, what is information, what is disinformation. What's been leveled against the president is serious, even in the report, uh, and we'll get to that part in just a second. Do you think that it's important that we, we maintain a supreme focus on all of these, you know, these sites of wounding on the body of South Africa? No, we must. And we must not lose sight of it. Like, like today, the, so last night the state capture report came out. Today there's breaking news, drop off your mask. There's monkey pox. Those are issues that wants to divert us from the real issues. The same thing happened when the Glenco report uh, came into light. Boom, there's Transnet CEO, CEO and the executives that were arrested. So every time there's a breaking news, still there's breaking news. When the Palapala Farm Gate came into light, no, the Guptas, Guptas, Guptas are arrested in Dubai. So there's always fo something to defocus us as the people of South Africa. We must not be defocused. By the way, going back to that report, Ramaphosa himself is implicated in that report, in that he confirmed that the deployment committee, which he was, he was chairperson of, used to appoint people. And that deployment committee is the one that appointed people in serious and key positions in the, in, in the government. And he, also he must be accountable for that. He is not innocent in this whole thing. So, so the report mentions him in terms of those findings uh, with relation to, I mean, one would say tantamount to saying being negligent or derelict in his duty. Uh, you know, the appointments of David Mashlobo and uh, Arthur Fraser, both to those senior uh, positions in, in the security uh, apparatus of our country, uh, with regard to not taking seriously allegations that were made, for example, like the ones that were made by Vikile Mbalula yeah. about having been told about... Um, do you, do you think that there should have been more censure against the president on those issues or that the commission should have looked at other areas um, where, where, the, you know, where the president might have, in, in, in your view, been complicit? No, remember the president came here and said he's a clean man and, 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 and uh, now he's being exposed that actually you're not a clean man. But even before the report came out, Palapala Farm exposed him that you're actually not a clean man. So Ramaphosa must be held accountable. He, he needs to answer to the people of South Africa and be honest with them that he's not the man that he, he claims he is. During the day, he's something else. At night, he becomes a, a, an animal that kidnaps people, that does money laundering, that uh, does GBV to women, domestic workers, that kidnaps people. And, and, and so there's a long list of the wrong things that Ramaphosa is doing, including having been the leader of business uh, in the government of uh, Jacob Zuma. He was the leader of business. His own company was in, involved, the Seriti was involved in the massive coal uh, contracts of ESCOM when he was the leader of business that was overseeing ESCOM. So the man is not clean. The man must just sit down and step aside and let us run this country forward. But Mpile, to go back to your principle that you invoked at the beginning, 
about being supremely focused on the issues and not being unfocused into things that could potentially distract us. When you speak with relation to the president, for example, on these charges, we're all saying these are allegations. They are serious allegations. It goes to the heart of governance, of, of our government, the seat of our government. It affects the president. They cannot be taken lightly. Where there is smoke, you know, we should follow the signs or we should follow the evidence. And if he is guilty, he must be found guilty. But you describe it as... As fact, do you think that there's a, there's a risk there of falling into, into you know, the part that somebody else is setting, Arthur Fraser in, in this case, around the allegations that he's made against the president and the case that he's lodged against the president? Why will you not hold that in reserve to say, these are serious, they must be investigated, but, but you, you state them as fact? No, it, it, they're in an affidavit. The affidavit has been given to the police. Now I'm saying the president must step aside so that the police can investigate. But these are allegations, think, right? Yes, these are allegations. Right, no, okay. They are allegations. Now, Iman, you work for the SABC. Do you think that if there's anything about the CEO of this SABC, you yourself will go and stand up and against the SABC CEO and investigate him and even recommend that he be removed? You won't. He pays your salary. Now imagine a mere no, police officer. No, imagine a mere police officer and an NPA <laughs> officer and a Hobbs officer who must now investigate the sitting president. They're not going to do that. So we are saying they're in deep trouble. I mean, look, personally, I wouldn't do that. Uh, and, it, and I no think my reputation would. precedes That's why me. I, was I, I would. To say, I mean, step no. aside and so that you can allow the investigation to go ahead. Personally, I would. I mean, as a journalist and as a person, hopefully, of integrity, I would stand up, even if it was at the risk of my job. Um, but what you're saying then suggests that you don't believe that the NPA and the other investigating authorities w would be able to do their jobs. They won't. Or up to now. Who, who, who has investigated the Tramapas? I mean, the day after Mkhwebana, after Kate Mkhwebana said, I'm going to investigate, she was suspended. So who has the balls in the NPA and the Hawks? We know that uh, Bato is not going to investigate. We know that the police are not going to investigate anything. So we are saying to the president, if really you are clean and you say these are just mere allegations, by the way, he confirmed himself that yes, indeed, he had money himself. And that money, we've seen part of it going to Namibia which is recorded, it's on the record. And he says he didn't steal money from anyone, but he's told, because if you put money in your matters, it's money that is not recorded, it's money that SARS doesn't know about. And SARS, if SARS knew about it, SARS would have taken their portion, which goes to public funding. Right. Maybe as a closer, you know, at the very beginning, and, and you know, you, you talked about we didn't need the State of Capture Commission of Inquiry. We should have relied on law enforcement. And you, you mentioned the Hawks as well. Now you're saying in relation to the president, um, the Hawks and other law enforcement agencies would not be able to, to do their job. Which is it? Is it that it depends on who they're investigating? No, I'm saying what, what I said was that. Um, yes, the state capture report is done. It's, it's, it's done and dusted. There's nothing we can do about it. We spend over a billion rands. But it still takes you back to the NPA and the Hawks. So those people that are implicated, that are recommended to be charged and whatnot, they are not going to jail tomorrow. The four years that we lost is the four years that Hawks and NPA should have investigated and put people in jail. So what we are saying is that we've got enough facilities and enough institutions in this country to curb corruption. But we keep on delaying it with state of with commissions that are never ending. I mean, Ramapas, how many commissions has he uh, implemented himself, has he established himself? A lot of them. Right. Out of all of them comes a report that can still be taken on review. So you wasted the South African four years of South Africa's time when that four years should have seen people going in and out of court clearing their name or being prosecuted and going finally to jail. Now we spent billions of rents and after the billions of rents we've got volumes and volumes of reports right. that must still go back to the Hawks, must still go back to NPA to investigate it. Right. I think we need to get our priorities right. Well, thank you for talking to us this evening. We appreciate your time. Umpile Mautua is the Treasurer General of the EFF. We did also reach out to uh, the ANC for a comment on, um, on both the report and of course uh, the allegations that have been leveled against members, high, high place members of the party. They haven't yet responded. As soon as they do, we will bring them onto the program.